Hey guys, it's Jess and I'm back here with another video for you. If you watched yesterday's video, you know that I did the first part of an interview with amazing pin creator. His name is Ryan. He's from Archimedes Pin Design. He'll be linked down below. And today we're going to finish that interview and I hope you guys enjoy it. This interview will start up right with us talking about designing pins. So here you go. <laughs> so when you're designing a pin, how do yeah. you decide how big it's supposed to be? Um, that That is a good question because it really is all over and what you're trying to accomplish. So um, say with the work trilogy, those are only two and three quarters round. Okay. Um, so two and three quarters round versus um, yeah. A big, yeah. So if you're trying to accomplish something that's just going to be when people look at it and just have this wow factor and they're going to want to put it on their wall and just look at it and stare at it and stuff, the three and a half kind of jumbo four inch things, that's kind of the reaction you get out of it, but they're not practical generally. You know, um, these were much more practical, um, having three of these that take up almost the same space as one big pen. Um, you, uh, I also was able to get those three pens for almost the same price as, as Arthur, oh. as far as manufacturing goes. So you kind of, that's another, that's another thing. You can kind of get three for one and almost, um, um, but, uh, I made a Bruni, a Bruni pen. Uh huh. And he is only two and a quarter. And okay. he, I think, is kind of at the maximum size of what I call wearable size. Yeah. Um, you get much bigger than that. There, It gets pretty hefty and it wants to like fall forward or whatever. So that's kind of at the, the large scale. So it depends on really, do you want someone to wear your pin? If you want someone to wear your pin, you need to make it under, I would say, two and a quarter. That's about your maximum. Your maximum. Um, you, can, you can display any size. You know, right. it doesn't really matter about that. But as far as functionality and what you want the end result to be, um, that size matters, of course. Um, right. People aren't wearing big pins um, unless they're like sat in on satchels or, or, you know what I mean? If they're on like yeah. display things that you can sling over. But if you're actually going to like put them on lanyards and things like that, it's kind of hard to have a big three inch pin on there, especially if you had a bunch of them. Yeah. So, well, <laughs> when you're walking around the park with, something like that the backs have a tendency to fall off <laughs> uh, so. and yes if you have a back your backs fall off of a big three inch pin and it hits the ground that pin is not going to be in good shape right <laughs> just, just the inertia of three inch pin falling and hitting the concrete is not a pretty thing yeah yeah um when you're deciding on that size does mm -hmm. the design factor in like are certain detailed pins better at a bigger size than a smaller yeah. size? You lose, you lose detail the smaller you get, absolutely. Um, you know, I would have been able to have a lot more detail on that little tiny Bruni, because Bruni is only about three quarters to an inch big on that, on that snowflake. Right. Um, if I would have made it a half overall, everything a half inch bigger, I could have, you know, there's a little snowflake on the tip of his tongue. That would be larger that you could see at a bigger distance, you know? So there's, there's, there's trade-offs for sure. Um, um, you can get more detail in faces and eyes and lips and all those things on the small characters um, where, uh, so on larger ones, you can actually, so there's, you know, screen printing elements and things like that. Right. So on this Cinderella right here, you're limited I don't know if you can see that, but you're limited to screen printing her face. You can't, oh, okay. I, I can't, you can't put those type of details and because everywhere you have enamel, it has to be encircled with, with raised metal that okay. that's what encapsulates your, your enamel. And so for me to make her eyes and lips, um, have enamel in them, she, her, her face would have to be three times the size probably, um, in order to start getting enamel in those fields. But screen printing is a wonderful thing because it helps you have smaller designs and get intricate, intricate faces um, on smaller on smaller things, which is really great. Um, awesome. Yeah, so that way you can make a small Cinderella face and not have to use enamel. Right. Can you talk to us about the difference between an A grade pen and a B grade pen? Yeah. So 
I think it varies slightly with, with a lot of designers, but generally for me is an A grade. An A grade for me is as close to flawless as possible. Mm-hmm. In, in my experience, you still see very few what I would consider flawless pins. It's almost non-existent because just because of the, the handmade nature of mm-hmm. pins, they're literally handmade. Every single one of them is painstakingly filled by hand, every field by a human, and um, and errors are made. And so and 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 variations are made. Even even something that's not an error from one pin to the other, you will see subtle undulations in the enamel surface, and all those are still considered in the A the A grade, right? Um, um, so an A grade still can have what you would consider minor, minor, minor flaws, um, mm-hmm. at least to me. And I really am picky. I am so picky. So when you get an A grade from me, it's an A grade. Um, and it's it's considered the best of the best that I can find in the lot that I get, say it's 50 or 75 on a limited you know, edition. Um, but that being said, there is no, there is no perfect pen. I've, I've seen a couple of close ones. Um, right. Arthur... Arthur was interesting because the manufacturer made a mistake and accidentally only made the first 50 because it's a limited edition to 75 and he oh. only made 50. And so I had to get back to him and say, you missed the last 25. Um, so I didn't have the extras in hand for, for weeks because they had to make, they had to make the final 25. Right. Um, and he did such a wonderful job on them. Um, he made, he made all 25 of those A grades. Wow. Um, so I don't know, he probably was just doing that to be nice to me (laughs) because he had forgotten, but, um, so, but they, some of them were, were so close to flawless that I was just amazed, which was just really neat to see, um, B grade, B grade, you start to get minor, minor flaws. They might have a little, like a pinprick in the enamel. Um, there might be subtle scratches, you know what I mean? It, but all, anything that I would rate as B grade, B grade none of those flaws will I allow on the faces of the characters ever. Um, and that's, that is, that is something that I've committed to. So any B grades that customers buy from me, they will know that any flaw would be on say a background or something like that. Right. Nothing, nothing that would actually be on the face. Um, and then C grade would be, and we don't sell many C grades. Um, it has to be a C grade. That's still what I would, I would consider a B minus, you know? <laughs> uh, so still no flaws on the faces or in the kind of the main body of the characters. Um, but there might be two or three things that happen kind of outer areas. Got it. Um, flaws always happen on the backs and that's just a manufacturing thing okay. um, because of they always protect the fronts as much as they can. And so they sacrifice the backs to be able to do that. And so you get staining and scratches and things like that. So backs are always going to have weird stuff on the back, staining, scratches, just, um, you're just going to have to accept that. That's just the way of life. Um, it's, it's really rare to get a perfect back for sure. Um, I will say though, that, um, sandblasted backs versus, um, non-sandblasted sandblasted tend to stain easier for some reason. I get more oh. stains on the back of those versus shiny backs. Like um, this series, uh-huh. you see, they almost came back all perfect on right. the trilogy. And I did, and I had shiny um, plate on that instead of having sandblasted. Um, so any makers out there considering that, you'll get, in my opinion so far with all the pins that I've made, the pins on the non-sandblasted backs come back better. Oh, that's the backs come out in better condition. Not sure why that is, right. um, but it is. My next question is how how do you determine that addition size? Um, two kind of two factors. One is just the response. So the typical thing that that pin makers do, and you've probably seen it on Instagram, is they'll put like an interest post out. And that really is to feel kind of the interest. It actually serves two purposes. It gets people hyped up, of course. Wow, look what I just did. Look at this artwork. Um, start getting you know feedback there. But it really also is to determine how many should I make? Should it be only 50? Should it be you know, 7,500, whatever? It really depends on the response that you get. Or should it be made at all, right? Um, right. Um, I've actually, I've, I've made pins where 
the response wasn't great. And that was when I was newer, you know, so there isn't a lot of people who are even really seeing your pins out there. I went ahead and made them anyway, just because I figured I'm in it for the long haul and I'll get some recognition down the road and then they'll be able to go back and buy like the Cinderella pin later on. Um, if they, if they're liking things and they're like, Hey, that'd be cool to get his first pin. Um, so limited edition for me is really dictated by the response of, and, and I tell people in the post, really let me know, will you, will you get it? Will you buy it? Um, if, if it gets made and that's how I gauge it. Right. Um, that's why Arthur was a limited edition 75. The response to him was out, outrageous. It was amazing. Right. Um, so it was in the trilogy the trilogy. I did limited edition 50 just because I was selling them all together and it was three pins. And so it was going to be expensive to buy them. And mm-hmm. all of those pins were sold as sets, mm-hmm. not really anything that I did That's I just offered them as sets, but all, but I think four pins were sold complete wow. as sets. Um, so people, so people committed to like a pretty big purchase to buy all three. Um, that's why I only did them as limited right. edition 50 instead of 75. I, I could, I could have done 75 and they would all sold, <laughs> but I did. Right. So what's the turnaround time be between when you submit your everything to the manufacturer and when you get it? Yeah. Um, it varies. This year was really weird. Um, right. It, because of um, when I, I didn't, I didn't realize how long China shut down. So all the manufacturing happens in China for right. fantasy pins. Um, an interesting fact that a lot of people don't know is that in the United States, first of all, they don't, they won't do fantasy pins. Um, just oh. before, you know, trademark issues, they, they just don't oh, want God. to step. They just don't want to be perceived as anything, even though um, we actually aren't breaking any rules. Um, right. It's, they don't want to be perceived because it's a lot easier for someone to shut their company down in the United States, but the United States companies, they don't make any pin larger than three inches. Oh, Uh, some of them don't go past two and a half. And so they're not even a viable option for most fantasy pins. Um, if they did make them, they, they won't China will do anything you want. They will make them this well, small, they, they won't, won't go, I think under a half an inch, but they'll go, they'll do anything. You've seen some of the crazy jumbos that, that fantasy right. makers make that weigh like three or four pounds. You know, they're just yeah. enormous. My wife has one of those, by the way. Um, <laughs> um, I think that big Pixar one, she has that one, but oh, yeah, that one's huge and weighs. A it's, ton. It does. Yes. And it is, it is amazing. It is amazing. Right. But um, so back to your question though, as far as time, you know, we got into this right before Chinese New Year. And so our pin is in production and they shut down for a month and then COVID happened. And so all this crazy, crazy stuff happened. But typically right now they are cruising along really well. At least my manufacturer is. Um, I have, um, I want to say four to six weeks is when I'm getting pins back. And that is very, very, very fast at a really high quality. Right. Um, yeah, he was he was able to turn around those last twenty five of our third and get those back to me in three weeks, That's which awesome. is incredible. Yeah. Granted, they had them all made and all that stuff, but um, but the complexity of it is definitely going to dictate you know some length. Also, if you're going to do an artist proof, so an extra sample, that's going to take no matter what. If you do that, it's going to take four weeks longer. So um, so you're talking eight weeks or so to get a pin back. Um, there are, I know there are other manufacturers. I can only speak to my manufacturer that I use exclusively, but I do know that there are others that uh, there are some wait times where there's the, the pin makers are saying, you know, this one's not going to be back for six months. I, I couldn't do that. That would just, that would drive me crazy to wait that long. And as a consumer, I could see that would just be crazy. But, but, um, I do have some very committed uh, pin fans out there who said, who would say, we'll wait six months if that's what it takes. And I'm like, nah, it's not going to happen. But, um, I know you waited for a long time to get Arthur, Ar- you know, you know, it, it, it seemed like a reasonable amount of time. To- yeah. It, it would have been four weeks earlier had COVID not happened. That's, <laughs> you know, so, um, yeah. it put everything on a big, on a big hold, but now everything is really humming. I mean, they are cruising through things. I have um, a pin that you want in hand, and we're we're doing some QC on them right now. But um, it's the ten paces pin, 
and oh, yeah. it, it's so I actually have some in hand right now. I was going to show you, but um, the um, we we had some minor screen printing issues come back, and so I sent I sent some back and said, "Hey, I'd really like these remade." And he's like, "Well, we're on it. We're going to do it for you." And so um, I, I just want to be able to deliver the highest quality to everybody. Um, I don't want to have to sacrifice, you know, to someone and say, you know, what, this is really more like an A minus. I don't want to have to do that. I wouldn't right. feel good about it. So I want to make sure everyone gets what they can, uh, uh, like the highest quality possible. But that pin, you're going to want. You're going to want this. Oh, yes. Oh. It's so cool. It, it is, is so cool. This is a very unique pin because um, this pin, the background, I don't know if you can see it, but it yeah. has a, it's a gradient. And so oh. it starts, it starts light and it ends dark at the bottom. So what they yeah. call an ombre or whatever, right? The young kids call an ombre. Um, <laughs> I call a gradient. So it is, it's a gradient. And they were able to screen print a gradient for me um, awesome. with a screen, with a screen printed. And you'll notice that in there at the very top to see Archimedes and yeah. Wart. we're sitting in the top there watching right at the very beginning of when this wizard's duel right? starts. And so, it turned out just so much better than because uh, I, I was kind of stretching the manufacturer on this one. I'm like, I want the, can you do a gradient over this and then screen print on top of it, the black tree? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, I think we could do that. And awesome. sure enough, he, he did it. And the result was amazing. So I can't wait to get them out to folks. I just got to get those, those remakes back. And so I can get them out to everybody. So oh, we'll probably cool. start trickling. Yeah. So. You won't. So, okay, this is just for me. Okay. Have you ever considered um, creating their castle? Because there are so few pins that depict the castle. I have one. Are you Paris. doing the, the falling over? Oh, the Paris one where it's all, yes. Yeah, I'd love to get a full thing of their castle because you never see it in any of their pins. And right. No, it's I, a traditional castle. It, it really is. And... Uh, because I do the art, everything is just so darn slow. I, eventually, I want to try to get to everything in the Sword in the Stone world. Um, I do, I do designs and you know the princesses and all the all this stuff right. too. Um, and they're all near and dear, just because Disney is a big part of my family's life. You know, Disneyland and all that stuff. We used right. to go every three years uh, while the kids were growing up. I have five children, oh, and wow. uh, and so we would go every three years because the the way they were born every three years, and so. It was kind of like they graduated to the next level of enjoyment of the park. Right. You know what I mean? And so, yeah. yeah so it was like, now I want the rides, or and the next one is I want the princesses. And so it was right. that's going too often. They just lost that experience, but that's how we did it every three years. But it's always been a big part of our life. So I do all all the genres of of characters and in right. the movies. The Sword in the Stone is near and dear. So yeah, it's an yeah. <laughs> um let's see here but i i will i will put the castle in the back of my mind and start okay. thinking of a, a concept really cool <laughs> uh, yeah, no you're you're not kidding that would be awesome um what do you say was your biggest challenge as a pin creator um okay biggest challenge as as for me mm -hmm. uh not being able to just do it fast enough um you know and and wanting the big you have to do this right as a fantasy pin maker because there's been a lot of crazy stuff happen with folks doing it wrong and leaving a lot of people in the lurch holding you know have, having spent a lot of money not getting pins and so the big temptation for pin makers is to just want to produce and produce and produce and it just gets ahead of you and then all of a sudden you're you've spent thousands of dollars on production and you're just not selling pins. And so I, we, we committed to not doing it that way. So all of our pins get funded prior to putting them into production. Right. And so that's always a big frustration. So being able to fund the pins prior, you know, being able to actually pay the manufacturer in full to get them done um, prior to collecting any money. That's really, that's the best way it, it ensures that everyone is safe. Right. right. Um, it's your, you as a customer are safe. Um, we are protected as well. That way we don't go into some crazy bankruptcy. Um, right. You know, everything is just OK. And and we've always committed to having a reserve available just in case something were to go crazy, like a manufacturer shut down. I mean, that is very that's a, that's a reality. You know, um, you just never know something might happen and that they just get shut down 
basically they did get shut down, right? And so that could have still been going on. We just had no no clue. Um, luckily, we're back open and running strong. But being able to know that I could say, is it Je- do you like Jess or Jessica? Um, I usually go by Jess, but either okay. is fine. So for for you, Jess, if you know if I came to you and say, you know what, we we shut they shut down, or the whole pin was a complete bust. They manufactured it horribly, and we we're just going to have to refund everyone's money for this pin. We have enough in reserve for every pin that's in production to be able to go to hundreds of people and say, here's all your money back. We're going to start from scratch. Um, okay. And so we've that we're dedicated to doing that, um, and and it's. And it's a good model to work from. It doesn't let you move as fast though. And that's, that is, so that's the big frustration is I would like to have 10 pins in production at one time, but we're usually at around five. Um, so a good number. It, no, it is. It is. Um, but I want to have more just because I, you're always wanting to like release the next, that next piece of art that gets everyone right. going, Oh my gosh, look at that. Can you imagine, you know, that's right. You're always after that next like. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> um, do you have a couple of pieces of advice? I mean, that was obviously a very big one, but do you have any other advice for fantasy pen creators or expiring creators? Oh, yeah. Um, well, I say, you know, you, you should just do it um, and just do, do research, whether it's your own design or not, because the way that manufacturing is done, it's great. All you have to kind of do is come up with a sketch you come up with a sketch and a concept, most manufacturers will work with you on designing the art and some of them do it for free. Wow. Um, because they want your business. And so they're motivated to, to help you out. Um, and they have wonderful artists there. And so there are a lot of pin makers that are producing these wonderful pins and they're not drawing them themselves. They're actually having artists from China and the manufacturers do it. Do it. They're, they're just taking your concept and converting it to the the you know a pin and then you get to say yeah i like that um don't like that color you get to just kind of play with it and get it till you like it got it and then you can expand from there you can you can then maybe hire an artist if you're not the artisty type um but i i um do all my own art and also deliver pretty much pin ready art as well i i i finalize everything in illustrator which is what they do in china so oh, right. I actually save them a lot of steps when I send it over. So I give them, I give them pin ready art when I send it to the manufacturer. Awesome. Um, so it, it, that also shortens a little bit of time mm-hmm. on my manufacturing, but there is, it's such a creative outlet. If you want to be creative and you just have a drive for it, if you just want to do something, you've just got to, you got to do it. Just doodle something and figure out how you can make it into a pin. Got it. Yeah. Yeah, it's, and there's a huge community out there of support. It's, that is amazing, you know? Um, yeah, I think every, the Disney everyone's very supportive. in general is amazing. Yeah, and I had no idea that this, this part of it exists. I knew about the whole kind of the authentic, you know, pin trading, that right. whole world, which my wife had been in for a long time. That, that pin community is great too, but I had no idea really how deep the, the fantasy world is. It's, if you're watching this and you haven't been involved in fantasy pins at all and you're considering it beware because it is a deep dark rabbit hole that is <laughs> once you're in it it's hard to get out of it um but there's a there's beautiful things in there and so yeah yeah a lot of the fantasy pin creators are like these uber lovers of disney that just it comes through in their art yeah and there's a place for it there's a there's a place in the market for fantasy pins um i think like i said at the beginning i think we as fantasy makers have actually raised raised the bar on how pins are supposed to look um and i think disney take has taken notice i hope i really think they have i've seen a couple of designs that are similar to designs I've seen from fantasy people so Mm -hmm. I think there's and it's usually the fantasy pen that you see first do you have any big designs besides MIM coming out soon (laughs) that no one has seen uh any art releases on yeah I do I have I actually have quite a few that no one's even seen um um trying to think what what can I divulge um how about which which movie? Can you tell uh, 
well, I have a crossover that I'm doing of, of with Stitch, but I'm not going to say who the other character is. Got it. Yeah. I may have actually shown you the art. I don't remember. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe someone else. Uh, but it's a Stitch crossover and it is on oh, an epic yeah. level. Yeah. So it's on an, but it's on an epic scale. And so it, it's yeah. going to be, it's, it's quite a pin. It's going to be like six inches. You know, it's just, wow. yeah. Um, so that's coming later and it's going to have, the approach on those are going to be way different. Those are going to have to be a lot of commitment from buyers type of thing before you make right. a pin like that. Cause it's, it costs thousands to make one of those. Right. Um, and so it'll be on a different level, but I would say the one that I'm most excited about is, is from Sword in the Stone of course. Um, and I am about 90% done designing it today. I was actually working on it just before oh, wow. our zoom. And, um, it is a, it, and I think it is the only one that has ever been done, at least in the fantasy world, but it is going to be a, um, a profile pin of Archimedes. Seriously? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and it's, it's looking really neat. And it's going to be in the classic, you know, that classic profile style that Disney right. established. And so, um, wow. but it's going to be cool. It's going to be really cool. And it's going to be one of a kind because it hasn't been done yet. And, and I'm not even sure Disney had made one yet. I don't um, think so. I haven't seen one. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I, asked her, I asked her a few of the people in the know. And, and they said, I don't think there's ever been one made. And so yeah. I, I've been designing it. And uh, like I said, about 90% done, really excited. I'll probably be releasing the art within the next couple of days. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, you're gonna love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I'm addicted to your Sword in the Stone pens, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's kind, that's awesome. <laughs> um, my last question for you is just, where can people find you if they wanna invest in your pens and look at your other artwork and stuff? Yeah, so um, we just launched our website. Um, we've oh, been designing awesome. for a while, so we actually have it. It's only been up for about four days now. Um, I've been doing everything on Instagram. So first of all, Instagram is, is, uh, I have to think about it. Pin <laughs> is archimedes.pin.design. So that's archimedes.pin.design. Right. And I'll my... have links below. Oh, correct. perfect. Perfect. And the, our new website is, um, archimedespins.com. Oh, awesome. Yeah. So pretty straightforward, archimedespins.com. Nice. And all the current artwork is up there. So all the coming soon, all the things that are available and in hand are there. Um, I still have some um, Arthurs. I still have some extras that are on there, just okay. a few. Um, you don't need to get one. We've already got one. Um, but there's, there's, a, there's a few other designs there and there's a lot coming. I have five in production. So those will all be in hand probably within the next four weeks and then more will be rotating in. But for all you SITS fans out there, I'll be releasing probably one pin a month throughout okay. for the rest of the year, just because I don't, I don't want to kill your pocketbooks. I don't want to, <laughs> your bank accounts drain them down. We appreciate that. <laughs> yes, because I've got the whole slider series coming where there, yeah. there are three slider pins that are coming out and there are going to be three more being designed in that series. Oh, and cool. there's just a lot going on. And we have our whole versus series coming out. Um, we have two there Moana's in production right now. Um, if you haven't checked out the versus series, it's going to be a big series. I think of 12 different pins and they're, they're kind of on an Epic level as well. Um, but anyway, that's how you can get a hold of me. <laughs> that's awesome. Okay. I, that interview just blew me away. He was so amazing. He's an amazing person and an awesome artist. I hope you guys enjoyed watching that interview as much as I enjoyed doing it. If you like this type of content, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and let me know in the comments what you learned from this interview or what you enjoyed about this interview. So until next time, I'll see you guys real soon.